action, action, action. No, oh, I don't know. I just hadn't done that yet. That wasn't really supposed to happen right then, but I forgot that I hadn't used this yet. Can you all hear me? All right, sorry. As I watched West Side Story last Sunday, that's the movie that we watched together in the theater on Sunday afternoon to prepare for today, and it's the movie that I'm going to preach on. Uh, a different movie came to mind because I love one of the songs from it. It's in the very beginning of the movie. The movie is Back to the Future. came out in 1985, starred Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd about time travel. And Back to the Future has nothing to do with West Side Story, but, as I said, it has this song that I love by Huey Lewis in the News called The Power of Love. It's a rock ballad. It says this, The power of love is a curious thing. Makes one man weep, makes the other man sing. Changes a hawk to a little white dove. More than a feeling, that's the power of love. Later on, it says it can make a good one, a bad one good and make a wrong one right. And it says in its chorus, it's strong and it's sudden and it's cruel sometimes, but it might just save your life. That's the power of love. I don't know about Just Might Save Your Life from West Side Story because without spoiling too much of that movie, it is loosely based on Romeo and Juliet and so there is a lot of death in the movie in case you didn't know. In fact, it is truly a tragedy because the main character dies in the end. Again, I hope I'm not ruining this movie for you. What's amazing in West Side Story is what happens when Tony, the main character, dies in the end. You see, there are two gangs the Sharks and the Jets. We happen to have a Sharks jacket here because one of our church members was in West Side Story at some point. These two gangs have been rivals all along, and yet when Tony dies, there's a moment at the very end when they come together and lift his body up and carry it off screen. And I think in that moment we get a glimpse of the power of love. And it seems like that's unheard of for them because all throughout there's this strong rivalry going on, the Sharks and the Jets fighting and calling one another names and doing physical damage to each other's property as well as to their people. There's a whole set up of a rumble, they are at a dance together and they determine that they will fight in a determined, at, a, at a specific time and place in order to declare once and for all who is the winner of the turf that they are fighting over. It seems like all they know is fighting with one another. But then this magical thing happens. Tony, who is part of the Jets, meets Maria who isn't technically part of the Sharks because they're boy gangs, but Maria is part of the community that the Sharks represent. She's a Puerto Rican living in America. And Tony is changed by the power of the love he finds with Maria. In fact, the power of love is evident throughout the film because there's another character in the 1961 uh, version of the film. It's a character named Doc who takes Tony under his wing. In the new remake from this year, uh, it is played by a woman and the character's name is Valentina. But regardless, she takes Tony under her wing. And in fact, we see the power of her love to transform Tony because Tony needs a place to stay and needs a job because he's been in prison. And he's, in, he's been in prison because of the fighting that he's been a part of as being part of the Jets. Nobody seems to want a convict. That's true even these days. It's hard to get employment, hard to find a place to live when you've been in jail. And yet Valentina takes Tony under her wing and cares for him. 
Tony is changed by the power of the love, both of Valentina and the love that he finds with Maria. And he's willing to show people that this love has changed him because, as I said, they set this rumble and he goes to this fight to try to stop it. He refuses to fight even though he is struck again and again by a member of the opposing side, Bernardo. He takes a literal beating and still refuses to fight because he believes that they can come together because he's come to love Maria. The story, of course, is a tragedy and it ends poorly. Through a mishap in the midst of the fight, one person is killed and Tony then, in a fit of rage, ends up killing someone else. And so he's on the run in the end of the movie until this moment when he's told that Maria is dead. It is then, in that moment, that he decides he has to offer himself up because he cannot live without her love. He does it for love. It shows the power of love. Love can drive us to sacrifice all that we have. So, he is so in love with her that in his mind, if she is gone, then he might as well be gone as well from this earth. So he goes out into the streets calling for this person, Chino, who he's been told has killed Maria. He says, take me too. And sure enough, he's shot by Chino right as he sees that Maria is still alive. He ends up sacrificing himself, and in those last moments, he undoubtedly feels like it's for nothing, but we see that it does indeed still have the power of love because it transforms this group. This kind of love is the intense kind of love that we only tend to see in movies, but there is one other place that you can see this kind of love, and that is in the Bible. We read in Hebrews today that Christ offers himself for us, and in doing that, he fulfills the law. What we hear is that there was this process where every year they made a sacrifice, and they were reminded of how they had sinned, and they believed that the sacrifice took care of their sins temporarily, but they had to keep coming back every year to make the sacrifice again in order to cover their sins once again. But we're told that then when Christ comes and offers himself out of love as a sacrifice that it fulfills the law in a way that the law could never have been fulfilled before, and that for once and for all, the issue of sin has been taken care of through the sacrifice of love, through the power of love that we find in Jesus Christ. Now, of course, I'm interpreting a little bit because the Scripture doesn't actually say that Jesus does it out of love, but it is clear when you read the totality of Scripture that Jesus offers himself from a deep sense of love for humanity. In fact, God sends his Son down into the world out of a deep love for humanity. We hear that specifically in a famous scripture called John, found in John, John 3.16, For God so loved the world. It's an issue of love. God sends Jesus and Jesus offers himself because of love. And it shows, again, the power of love. Tony does what he does because of love and so does Jesus. Love has the power to transform people. That's what we hear in the Huey Lewis and the News song, right? It can turn a hawk into a little white dove. It can make a bad one good and a wrong one right. Tony ends up transforming things in his death as well. Again, we only get a glimpse of it, and maybe I'm assuming too much. Maybe the Jets and Sharks will go back to fighting the very next day, but the implication as they join together to carry Tony off screen as Maria follows them is that something fundamentally has been transformed through Tony's love for Maria. The difference between Tony and Jesus, of course, and there is never a perfect comparison when trying to preach a sermon based on a movie. In fact, as we walked out last week, I had multiple people say, I'm excited to see where you're going to go with this one, Pastor. 
It's not a perfect comparison because Tony doesn't know that his death will change things. He does it simply because he cannot imagine life without Maria. And we are led to believe that in that moment when he sees Maria is still alive and yet he is dying, that he regrets what he has done. That's different than Jesus who goes and sacrifices himself with the fullness of the love that he has, knowing the power of love to transform and knowing that his sacrifice will make that transformation possible. But regardless, it shows us the power of love because Tony, even though he doesn't know that his death will transform things, the power of love still makes his death transformational, his sacrifice of love transformational. At least, again, that's what we see is this small coming together. Who knows if it's a real coming together? These gangs have been at each other's throats for a long time. And of course, the problem with gangs is that they give us a false sense of unity. Because with the gang, you're all together with people who are like you, you're of like mind, and you're united against a common enemy. And this is a common theme among us as humans. We often will unite with a group against a common enemy, and we will call that unity. The problem is that God is about real unity, and God's unity is about having the best interests of everyone in mind, not about a certain group benefiting by being against another group. And so God's kind of real unity will never be accomplished through gangs or tribalism or political parties. It's only something that can be accomplished by the power of of sacrificial love. And I know at this point you're thinking, boy, this pastor sounds like a real hippy-dippy fellow. Because we only tend to believe that fighting can fix things. In fact, recently when we found out that our child, my wife and I found out that our child had hit someone at school, we were telling someone else about that. And we were saying, this is horrible, we want to fix this behavior. Do you know what that person's response was? Well, maybe Maxine had a reason to hit them, she said. (laughs) I wanted to teach that person about the power of love. Because revenge and fighting and war will never actually fix things. If anything, they tend to create more problems. We see that in the movie Again, while these gangs think that if they can have just one final rumble and that that will determine once and for all the end result that one of them is superior than the other, what ends up happening is that one on each side dies and things devolve into even a worse situation. It's a lot like what we hear about in Hebrews, how year after year the Israelites came and offered sacrifice hoping that that would fix the issue of sin but it wasn't until Jesus Christ came in his sacrificial love that the issue of sin truly was dealt with once for all. It is love, sacrificial love that actually changes, transforms, and fixes things. It is the kind of love that Jesus gives through his sacrifice, and it is the kind of love that Tony unknowingly offers up that unites these two gangs together. And let's be clear, it is a totally selfless love. Tony is willing to die because he is so in love with Maria. It has nothing to do with him. He's so in love with Maria that he just cannot imagine a world without her. And Jesus is willing to die because he is so in love with the world that he cannot see us continue in sin. He has to fix this problem through his sacrifice of love. We hear how deep this love is in a song that Tony sings. It's about Maria. And there's a phrase in there that I love. It says, All the beautiful sounds of the world in a single word. For Tony, that word is Maria. But for us, as Christians, that word is Jesus. 
I jokingly told people that I was going to rewrite the song Maria for the sermon today, right? Jesus, I just met a Savior named Jesus. The series Truth is that Jesus fulfilled the law by becoming the ultimate once-for-all sacrifice and that when we understand that, we are called to do the same. And as Roger pointed out, it's sometimes hard to know what sacrificial love actually looks like because we don't understand sacrifice very well all the time. We, ta- we do think sometimes that we've had to sacrifice a small thing and that that's bigger than it maybe is. What we can begin to look for, and I think shows whether it is truly sacrificial love, is whether it creates unity. Because we often are not willing to sacrifice many things in the name of unity. We're not willing to sacrifice our opinions or our ideas, our money or our time. And yet we are called to be people who offer sacrificial love that creates unity. We're not to be parts of gangs. That's why it's so strange that on any given Sunday morning there are a whole bunch of us sitting in a bunch of different churches, all in theory talking about the same thing, right? Worshiping the same Savior. But we seem to have broken up into our gangs. We are supposed to be people who are all about the true unity that God offers through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We're not supposed to see differences and say, I want you to stay in your place or go back to where you came from or all the other things that we tend to say and that the sharks and jets fight about together. They think that it's only through fighting that they will ever find peace. But Tony shows them that true transformation comes through the power of sacrificial love. And we can be those examples for other people as well. Yes, it is hard work. And indeed, to simply say the word sacrifice makes many of us shrink back because we don't want to have to sacrifice. But when you know Jesus, when you understand that the only other option is to continue to cycle again and again, as Hebrew explains, through an unending series of things that will never truly satisfy then we begin to be more ready to offer ourselves and all that we have. So this week, I want to challenge you to consider being a beacon of sacrificial love in some way and to seek true unity. It may be as simple as listening to someone who you normally would dismiss because you don't care for whatever it is they generally have to say. That is a a form of sacrifice, and it may create unity, and then it, in my mind, becomes sacrificial love that can transform things. It may be, as Roger talked about, giving up something that's truly important to us, and we'd have to identify what that is this week and to offer that up to someone else who may be in need of it. And in that way, we create, through our sacrificial love, unity because we acknowledge that it's not that we are better and that we should hold on to things, but that we are all equal and we are meant to share with one another. We can transform the world through the power of sacrificial love. Jesus did it once for all, and we are called to continue that work here in the world as his people. Amen.